got your Bibles this morning, I want you to open them up to St. John's Gospel, chapter 4. And I'd like to preach to you this morning all of that and then some. All of that and then some, but it's up there. I'd like to title the message this morning. If there was a title, I'd like to title it this morning that there's a river that runs through it. There is a river that runs through it. And I, I, I preached a part of this yesterday up at the men's retreat, but, but let, me, let me say to you this morning, and I don't know why that God is directing my thoughts and my minds to the individual this morning, but, but let me say one more time that you are absolutely important to God. I, I thought about it, and, and I heard a, a thing just this week, and I didn't know why I heard it till just now, but I heard a thing this week, and they was talking about the Amazon River, which is the greatest river on our planet. It, I, I mean, they, they talked about the massive amount of water that it dumps into the ocean, and, and then they begin to trace it backwards, and they said the Amazon River starts with a snowflake. Just one. Now, before I get into the message this morning, I, I want you to think about, now, now I'm not saying that you all, they got that thing on already too. I'm not saying that you all are flaky. I'm saying I want you to think about being a snowflake. Then I'll preach. I want you to think about being a snowflake so that you understand this morning that you're important to God. And it does, I, I, one of the youngins ran over a while ago and she wrapped her, her hand around my leg and she grabbed a hold of me. I wasn't expecting it, but, but I looked down and I thought, I wonder what it is that God is going to do with that one. But you see, one by one by one, God is going to cause a river to run through it. Now, let me read here. Let me read so that you all understand. And again, I want you to think about Everything that we preached up to this point all this year from the wilderness to coming out, to coming out in power, to not wasting the anointing, all of it has brought us to this point. I will begin to read, and, and I don't know if they've got verse 5, but I, I'm going to start reading in verse 4. And again, it's because of the individual, and I don't know who you are this morning, but I can tell you this much, I can feel in my spirit that God is speaking just to you. And you say, wait a minute, preacher, how do you know that? Because God is speaking just to you. In verse 4, Jesus was speaking and he said, And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called, by, called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat there, or sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. The Bible said, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy me. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews, they have no dealing with the Samaritan. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest. Man, I hit that yesterday too, and I, I, there is some, listen. If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him. He would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From where then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father? She had no idea that she was greater. He was greater than who Jacob was, but she asked the question nonetheless. She said, look, she said, our father Jacob gave us this well. He drunk out of it, his children and his cattle. It's been here a long time. You know, man, I'm telling you what, there's a river running through this message this morning. Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water, that that's in this well, he said, you'll thirst again. But he said, whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. It shall be a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. I began to think, and Brother Mike asked me when he come in this morning, he said, preacher, 
He said, do you know what you're going to be preaching on yet? And I said, nope, I know what I gave them up on the board. But then I began to think, let me tell you this morning, if you've come this way, I don't know what God's going to do in the service. But if you've come this morning and there's an empty in your heart, if you've come this way this morning and there's a longing, if you've come this way this morning and there's a drawing, I begin to think about this woman. She was this close. Brother Mike, it ain't going to be the same message. God is already changing it. Let me tell you this morning that she was just this close. She was face to face with the one that could change her life forever. But she didn't recognize it. May I say to you this morning, folks come to church and they get face to face with the one that's able to give them a drink that will change their life forever. But they fail to recognize who he is. You say, preacher, are you fussing? Nope. But let me tell you this morning, she said and she began to rely on her father Jacob, that ancestor. May I say to you this morning, your ancestors will not get you to heaven, but it is the one that said, I am the fountain man of living water. That's all free to me. I want to preach to you this morning about when you get close to Jesus, you ought to take a drink. When you get close to the one, and everybody said, well, preacher, why are you there? Listen, let me tell you what, I'm going to go ahead of myself for just a minute. But I begin to think about the church that I've got to go down for revival next week. And they've been after me now for almost three years. And they keep telling me, preacher, will you come? Will you come? Will you come? But let me tell you what. When I get down there, it'll not be a new gospel. But it'll be the same one that said whosoever. Listen, Jesus told him in John. Over, I believe, in chapter 5 or chapter 7 rather. He said on that last day, that great day he stood up. And he said, if you're thirsty... Come to me and drink. And if you drink of this water, he said, out of your belly is going to flow a fountain of living water. You know what that is? That's that you say, well, wait a minute, preacher. You ought not get stirred up. Let me ask you all a question this morning. Audience participation while I get my breath. How many of you all have ever dropped a bottle of pop just before you opened it up? You drop a bottle of pop just for you. How many of y'all still brave enough to open it right after you drop it? How many of y'all wish that you hadn't? Yeah. You know why? Because that man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Did I mention there's a river running through it? I began to think, you know what it is about that bottle of pop? It's something that's on the inside of it. It's not the outside element that does what it does, but it's something down on the inside. When you shake it up real good and you got your thumb over the top and you let your thumb off and the pop begins to explode, it's not the outside that did it, but it's what's on the inside. So may I tell you this morning that when I get excited, it's not what's on the outside, but it's, woo, man, oh man, oh man. Brother Rob, thank you for reading what you said. It is he that abides on the inside that makes me get stirred up and it bubbles up and it's got to get out. I begin to think, I want to preach to you if I can slow down long enough this morning. I preached three points up there at the men's retreat yesterday. And I got to tell you, there was some great preaching. There was some great teaching, if that's what you want to call it. There was some great testifying there. And it was all about the Holy Ghost. And it was all about the Spirit of God indwelling His people. And I began to talk to them. They gave me the topic. And I got to tell you, when you give me a topic to preach on, I, as most time it's tough. 
But they told me, they said, well, preacher, we want you to preach on the water being representative of the Holy Ghost. So I began to think about that. And the Bible tells me back in the book of Ezekiel, and you can go ahead and change that over there if you want to, in the book of Ezekiel, the Bible said that there was a place. It's called the throne room of God. And in that place is the source of the water that we're talking about this morning. It's the source that Jesus said. If you know about me and you begin to drink, listen, let me, before I go any further, let me tell you this morning, how many of you all, before you got saved, you heard about the Lord Jesus Christ? Just raise up your hand. Not now, but before you got saved, did somebody tell you about Jesus? Did you hear this morning that he loved you before you got saved? Did you hear this morning that he could wash you, make you whiter than snow? Did you hear this morning that he could let you start brand new. Brother Darrell, when you go see your grandson, you tell him that there is a river. Oh my, now I feel like preaching. The Bible says that there is a river that makes glad the hearts of men. You know what that is? There is a connection. You say, preacher, what is it? Well, when God began to look and he said they're going to need it in the throne room of God. And the Bible says that the waters begin Again, to usher out under the threshold. You know what that was? Mm. I am telling you, this ain't going to be nothing like yesterday. The Bible said that the water began to issue out under the threshold and it ran out the door. Church, listen to me this morning. You've got a message down on the inside of you. You've got a hope that nobody else has got. And I don't know about the rest of you all, but when God, the Bible said, if you drink of this water, it'll be in your belly. It'll be a fountain and it'll be a well. It's going to begin to bubble up. And when it bubbles up, you know what it's going to do. It's going to run out of you. Church, listen to this preacher this morning. On Friday night, we've got some folk that are coming here. And I don't want them, and please don't misunderstand me, but the folks that we've got coming here on Friday night, Brother Monty, I don't want you to have to visit them in the prison. So son, pray for them. Listen to me, church. When them people come on Friday night, they're only a step away. And you say, preacher, what do you mean? I'm telling you that when you get hooked on drugs and you get hooked on other things, it'll cause good people to do bad things and they'll end up where they are, but they don't got to. Church, listen, we've got them in the building on Friday night and there ought to be a river. Brother Shad, listen to me. Let that river that's on the inside, don't stop it up. Let it flow out that it can deliver them. Wow. We got to quit bottling it up. We're afraid that if we get excited, what's everybody going to think about me? Well, just in case you're sitting out there this morning and you're trying to make up your mind whether or not that that preacher has done or already lost it and whether or not that he's three bubbles off plum. Let me tell you what. I heard an old preacher one time. He wasn't ashamed to get excited. He wasn't ashamed to go down the aisle holding on his pant leg. He wasn't ashamed that he preached with a hanky so he wouldn't spit all over everybody. But let me tell you what I found out. I found found out that when the anointing of God began to flow, when the anointing of God began to get on him and it got up so much that he couldn't contain it anymore, that that same anointing, that same spirit, it began to flow. It began to flow down the church and it was coming right. And I got to tell you, when God's after you, it's hard to get away. Don't bottle it up, church. Our families are depending on us. Don't you? I began to think about that retreat. I began to think about all the, the fellows that stood up. We had one young man. He said that he had answered his call to preach the gospel about nine months ago. But he stood up and he said, fellas, 
He said, I want you to pray. He said, because I've got a battle. And he said, that battle is down inside of me and it's pride. And you say, preacher, why are you bringing it up right now? Because I've got to tell you what, church, until we get outside of ourselves and we allow God, we ought to say, here's my cup. Oh, listen, what God said, I might as well just go that way too. What was it that he said? He said, try me. May I suggest to you this morning that you try the Lord. And then not only did he say that, but he said, if you try me, I'll pour you out a blessing and it'll be so great that you won't be able to contain it. You know what that is? That means that if you pour it in and you pour it in and you pour it in and you can't contain it, that means unless of course I don't know anything about volume in a bottle I'm thinking that if you pour so much in a bottle that the bottle can't contain it, eventually it's got to get out. Some of you all been holding God in. Woo! I, I mean, every once in a while, you feel a stirring down on the inside, and God begins to move, and you don't know what to do with it, and you're saying, Oh man, God wants me to raise my hand, so you sit on him. God wants me to well, just just to weep a little bit huh, for some, you, you know because here's the thing every now and again huh, when the spirit when the water when the river begins to flow huh, have you ever wondered why you can be so happy and at the same time you can weep and you get you, I mean you just you you know what we do I don't want nobody to see me cry why not. Why not? You can weep when you're sad. You can weep when you're happy. But I've got to tell you this morning, if the Spirit of God is welling up inside of His people, when somebody that's unsaved reaches out to you, it ought to be electric, and they ought to get a hold of the fountain that never runs dry. Amen. You see, it started. It started in the throne of God. The Bible said there was a fountain that was opened up and it began to flow. Mm. Man, I just now thought about something else. <laughs> oh, I, I preach a message, may I just go there? It'll be all right. I preached a message one time about God's river and the devil's sandbags. <laughs> Y'all thinking, man, now that preacher is really, really. I mean, can you imagine? I think about, I drove across the Ohio River one time, and it, they was talking about an overflow in its banks, and how it was that they was beginning to set up sandbags. And you know what they was trying to do? They was trying to keep the river inside of its banks. Now, let me tell you this morning what the devil's trying to do in your life. How many of y'all, God has done something great for you? Raise your hand. It'll be all right. It's called audience participation. How many of y'all, God's done two things great for you? Raise your hand. Both of your hands. Woo! Got them both in the air at the same time. Now just wave to God and say, thanks for the greatness. Ah, it'll be all right. You know what that is? When the church gets excited, it's about like that river. And it begins to overflow the banks. And they begin to throw out the sandbags. And they're trying to keep it in its banks. May I say to you, listen, I just now thought about something else. Church, listen to the preacher. I think for a little while now that the devil is not happy about our church. I think for a little while now he's not happy about them that are stepping up. I think for a little while now he's not happy about the 
fact that we're beginning to overflow our banks. So he's beginning to stack sandbags in our way. You all can figure out what the sandbags are. I don't need to tell you that they're full of dirt, but he puts them in the way. And he tries to keep the river. But can you imagine this morning how the devil must feel when he stacks up the sandbags? The river comes by, and I've got to tell you, it doesn't overflow it all at one time. It begins to seep through the sandbags. Woo! I'm telling you, that's good. It begins to seep. It starts as a little trickle. But I've got to tell you what. If God can just get a little trickle through, it'll not be very long until the rest of the river is flowing through and over the obstacle the devil is putting in your way. Wow. I thought about thought about the folks that we've seen and I and now listen to me listen I thought about Ralph and I I'm not picking on Mel cause she's here but I told Mel several weeks ago at the hospital I couldn't talk to Ralph cause they had him medicated they had him sedated so bad that he just slept, he slept, he slept. And you know what I told her? I told her, I said, Mel, I said, it may not be me that gets to tell him that he needs to give his heart to the Lord. It may have to be you. And the devil began to stack up sandbags. Brother Mike and I went down there to visit Ralph in the hospital. And when they got there, you know what they told us? They said, just 15 minutes, preacher, 15 minutes ago, he was talking and he was coherent, but they gave him the medication and now he's sleeping. Sandbags. Me and Mike went down there, man, we was on fire. We knowed when we got down there, Ralph was going to give his heart to the Lord. And I know you all have heard this story before, but I'm going to tell it again because it fits. We was beginning to talk about that and we thought Ralph was going to get saved. We got down there and there was an obstacle placed in our way. Oh man, I just now thought about something else. May I say to you this morning, there is no obstacle that the devil can put in the way. I may not be able to get over top of it, but my God, woo, I'm telling you there ain't anything God can't do. The devil said, I'll just put him to sleep. So in his sleep, God said, while he's dreaming, I'll just send him an angel. Woo! Man, I'm telling you, it started in the throne room of God. You ought to just change the title to that. It started in the throne room of God. And the devil said, I'll put him to sleep. So when that preacher and deacon get there, they'll not be able to talk to him. But when we got there, an angel had been to visit. I don't know what the angel told him. You say, oh, wait a minute, preacher. Angels don't talk to people. Who told you that? I believe I got a whole Bible full of angels talking to people. Amen. I don't know what that angel said. Maybe the angel didn't say nothing. You know, sometimes an angel don't need to say nothing. All they got to do is just be there. Right. I mean, you think about it. If you're not saved and an angel standing there, you're looking at the angel, you're thinking, hmm. <laughs> and you know what he said? Ralph said later, he said, I didn't know whether or not that angel had come for me or not. But let me tell you what God did. While Ralph was sleeping and nobody else could talk to him, God began to stir his heart and he remembered the word of God. You know what that is? That word of God, the little bit that I got to tell Ralph. I said, Ralph, would you consider that God loves you? Would you consider that he wants to save you? He said, yes, I will. That's all I got to say to Ralph and he went back to sleep. But that little bitty trickle is all Oh, whoo, man, I'm telling you, you guys ought to spill over on somebody. I don't care if it's just a drop. When you all ever get something on you, and when you get it on you, it just seems to get all over you. Anti-seize compound. Anti-seize compound. You all say, preacher, what in the world has anti-seize compound? Man, I tell you, I think I could preach on it because anti-seize compound keeps you from getting stuck in a rut. Anti-seize compound, it, it comes in a little bottle that's about that big and about that big around and it's got a brush on it 
and I've never seen anything go so far. You say, preacher, what in the world does that got to do? Well, you hold on just a second. Let me tell you. You get that little brush out there, and you get just a little dab of anti-seize compound on you, and all of a sudden it's on this hand, and it's on this hand, and the next thing you know, it seems like that one little dab. Man, you know what? How many of y'all old enough to remember Brill Cream? <laughs> Man, you get just a little dab of God, and it'll do you. But I got to tell you what, I'm not satisfied with a little dab. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Old Spurgeon said it this way. He said you ought to get away from the sip that saves and get to the baptism that buries. What he was saying is get all of God that you can get. Amen. It starts in the throne room. River began to flow. Just a little bitty trickle. And we got back down to the hospital. When we got in there that time, Ralph was awake. And the first thing Ralph said to me beside hello, he said, preacher, he said, I think this is it for me. He said, I don't think I'm going to get out of here this time. I said, well, Ralph, if that's the case, I said, uh, you remember what we talked about last time? He said, oh, yes. The old devil put his foot out there and the river just ran around it. You know, one of these days it's going to drown him. <laughs> you say, I don't know if he is. Well, I, I don't know. I read in a book where he's going to get thrown into the lake. Amen. That's right. I said, Ralph, do you remember when I asked you about asking the Lord to save you? He said, yeah, I remember everything, preacher. I said, well, Ralph, since you said you're not going to get out of here, I, I said, would you, wouldn't you consider, uh, you know, making your peace with the Lord? He said, preacher, he said, whether I get out of here or not, he said, I'm going to be okay. He said, because I've done already done that. Oh, wow. There's a river. <laughs> Man, I, you know what? That, that's like taking the top off a fire hydrant in the summertime. Amen. You said, well, preacher, what in the world does that mean? Well, have you ever seen a fire hydrant in the middle of the summer? You take the top off it, you open it up, you know what happens? Yeah, but you know what happens when it does this? All the little kids come huh? All the little kids come oh, yeah. oh, Wait, 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 wait. You all got to get that. Say that loud enough everybody can hear. All the little kids come and play in it. <laughs> I know that you all think that this preacher's nuts. But when it's as hot as it can be, and it's as dry as it can be, the only relief that you can find is if the water begins to flow. And when you open up a hydrant and it begins to spray out, everybody that's out there that's dry, thirsty, and tired will run to the hydrant. There's a river. There's a river. This weekend, them fellows was telling me about their churches. And collectively, you know what they was telling me, preacher? There's a stirring. There's a stirring. There's a stirring. There's a flowing. There's a moving of God in the church. And folks are beginning to get saved. And folks are beginning to see. And folks are beginning to feel. And folks are beginning not to be. I got to tell you what. You know, it's hard if you come in here this morning and you're the only one that's soaking wet. Everybody else is going to know about it. That's right. I mean... Everybody's going to see it. Oh, let me help you understand that. Let me unravel the riddle for you. This morning, if you're saturated in the Spirit of God, if you're absolutely soaked by the river, if you've been swimming in it, there's folks that are going to see that there's a difference. How you doing, Richard? How many did you have this morning? Hey! Just so you all know, the travel however, how, you all come from how far? How long does it take you to get here? Well, almost an hour, I think. About an hour. So he's driving the church van, the other one. How many did you have not come this morning? Two. So that had been 15. So that's a full load in the van, which means in a couple of weeks we're going to need another van. <laughs> <laughs> now wait. I want you all to look over there at that section of the church. I think it looks good. 
Amen. I think, I think, I think, now, I, I got them, them, the, the youngins is going, man, I hope that preacher don't come back over here too late. I'm already here. I think they look good from Springfield and Plain City and uh, L- London and Marysville, Columbus. Have I missed anybody? See, you know what that is? How many times did I mention Delaware there? I never. You all get it in a little bit. What I'm talking about is there's a river that's running out of the church and it's unstoppable flow. And there's folks out there that are hurting on every side that need to know that God loves them. And there is something from the throne of God that can make them whole. I begin to think as I think about and I, I think I'll run on down in my thoughts just a moment. Because I want to tell you, I want to tell you all a story. How many of you all want to be used to God? Now be careful before you raise your hand. Be careful before you raise your hand. Let me ask it now. How many of you all want to be used to God in your life? Put your hand up. How many of you really want to be used to God? Put the other hand up. All right. Now for those of you that are here, whether you raised your hand or whether you didn't, I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story about a river. When uh, we were young, mom and dad lived down the street here at Main Road. Now, most of you all are aware of the fact that there's a reservoir right across. Right, I wonder what would happen. Ooh, man, I just now thought of something. Can I share this? I got time. I wonder what would happen to the church. This one. I wonder what would happen to the church if when the reservoir was running full, if the levee right there broke. (laughs) You say, oh, wait a minute, preacher. If the levee broke across the road from the church, it would overflow the church. Yep, you got it. I'm telling you, there's not anything that God cannot do if we let him. When mom and dad lived there, we we would be down below the reservoir there's a thing there. And they call, I think they still call them locks, don't they? Tony, is them things over there still called locks? You know why they call them locks? They'll lock them things to keep the water back. Oh, now listen, don't you all get aggravated at the preacher this late in the message? But some of you all has got locks. You got locks on your life. You got locks on your heart. You, you, you've got lives or locks. On your Christian lives. And what it's doing is it's holding back the flow. Where's my book? Wow. I'm telling you that thing moves on its own. Y'all get that when you get home. Because it does. It does. Now listen. Down at the bottom of that reservoir. Down below them locks. We'd go down there and we'd go fishing. Y'all get that one? Where's Todd at? He's over in junior church. I I ought to hit his favorite verse while I'm here, but I'll save it until he's in here. But we'd be down there below them locks and we'd be fishing. And there's a great big sign up there. And you know what it says? It says at the sound of the blast, there's going to be a raising of the river. You know what they were saying? At the sound, I seen him. At the sound of the blast, we're going to unlock the flow. Now listen to me this morning, church. Let me talk to you a moment. Because I tell you, God is doing incredible things in the church. He is doing incredible things. I, I'm seeing, Brother Mike and I was talking. I was privileged to get to spend some alone time with him this weekend as well. And him and I was talking about how great that it is to see people that are in the church beginning to step up and step out and get involved in different ministries and different aspects of the church. And people are now coming to me and they say, Preacher, I want to work. I want to work. I want to work. What do you need me to do? What do you need me to do? What do you... you know what that is? That's the sound of a blast. And God is about to unlock the flow. Listen. You know, Jesus told her, 
He said, if you drink of this water, not only will you never thirst again, but he said, there's going to be something down on side of you. Chuck, how many years you've been serving the Lord? Um, ever since I was 10, I think. A long time. Yeah. Because <laughs> Chuck is old. You say, well, preacher, you shouldn't pick on Chuck. Why not? If I ain't picking on him, I have to go pick on Nikki. Chuck, do you love the Lord? Oh, yeah. You want him to do great things in your life? Mm -hmm. Release the lock, son. Release the lock. You say, but wait a minute, preacher. You know what that is? That's a, that's a sign when there's a blast, when there's a difference, when there's a noise, that's a sign that everything, everything that you have been holding back, holding back and holding back is finally going to be realized and released. I don't know where you're at with God today. I don't know what your station in life is. I, I don't know what you have need of. I don't know what locks are on your heart and on your life, but I can tell you that there is something that started in the throne room of God, and if you will just release it, it'll change who you are forever. It'll change who you are forever. I thought about that young preacher that stood up, and he said, I need you all to pray. You know what he was saying? I got a lock. It's called pride. I got a lock on my heart, preacher. He, he said, ever since God has called me, he, he said, I'm struggling. I'm battling with myself, with my pride. with Because he said, I, I, I don't want it to be about me. He said, I want to get out of the way and let it be about God. You know what that is? That's taken off the lock. Taken off the lock. Let me ask you this morning, and I know that God is doing great things, and, and He's doing great things with folks here in the church, but, but the greatness, the greatness can only be realized in your life when you are willing to allow God to release the flow and let it flow out of you. I'm telling you, uh, it's on its way to Springfield. How many of you young folks are either in and around Springfield or you know somebody that is. You guys know anybody that's in Springfield? Yeah. All right. Now listen, the rest of you all that don't think you know anybody in Springfield, here's what I want you to do. <laughs> Next Sunday night at 6.30, I'm going to be at a church in Springfield preaching a revival. Now, they're not ready for what we're bringing. I'll tell you that. But I want you to go out and I want you to find as many young people as you can find. And I want you to get them to that revival. I want it to be so many young people there that we have to stand along the walls because we can't set them. You say, well, preacher, I don't know if I can do that. You can if you unlock your life and let God work in it. If you'll give it all to God and say, God, I'm going to take off the lock and I'm just going to let you work. I'm going to let you work. Church, listen to me because it's not just about the young people. Folks will tell me, well, preacher, you know, I'm getting older. It's for the young people to do. Who told you that? Who told you that? Some of the greatest men, women in the Bible that God used were those that were of age. God wants to unlock and use you today. He wants to let the spirit, you know, we, we, we get nervous because when we start talking about the spirit, everybody thinking, well, you know, he's, yeah, I have. And I'll tell you this this morning, church. I have come to a point of no return. You know, once you unlock that lock, and the water begins to flow, you, you can't get it back in the reservoir. It's on its way to its intended destination. So let me ask you today, church, are you willing to unlock the God that's in you, the spirit that's in you, the love that's in you? Are you willing this morning to unlock it so that it can flow out? You know, because I got to tell you what, if it's just in the reservoir, everything that is downstream, isn't going to benefit. So if you just keep it in you, you may make heaven your home, but there ain't nobody going to benefit from your life. But if you unlock the flow, if you unlock the flow and you allow God 
Everything that is downstream of you, everybody that you come in contact with, the Bible said it's going to be a river. There's a river that runs through it. And I got to tell you what, one last thing, and then I'll close. I don't know if any of you all have ever been uh, in a river when the current was flowing strong. It gets to the point that as the river rises that the current becomes so strong that you can no longer stand on your own two feet. It'll take you right off your feet. Now you'll get that in a minute. It'll take you off your feet and at that point you are totally and completely submissive to the will of the river. And it'll take you anywhere that it wants you to go. Now let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Are you willing this morning, saved and unsaved alike, are you willing this morning to step into a river that begun in the throne room of God and allow the flow to overcome you to the point that you can no longer control you, but you are submissive to the will of the river? Because when you get to that point and you'll say, all right, God, I'm going to unlock it. Here's my heart. Here's my life. God, I've wasted it long enough. I've kept it in long enough. And God, now, now I want to be submissive. Maybe you're here this morning and you're unsaved. And you say, well, preacher, what are you talking about? Listen to me. Jesus said that if you drink of this water, if you embrace me was what he was saying. I will supply all of your needs, give you everything that you need to make it all the way to glory. He doesn't leave anything out. So I wonder this morning, Brother Kyle, if you'd come. Let's bow our head for just a minute.